Hello everyone, today we are looking at our very own South African Grandmaster, Mr. Kenny Solomon's game against the chess bro from Canada, Mr. Eric Hansen. And they're both GMs and they're playing at the end of last year, 2019, um, the 12th of October, and uh, they get into a pretty a pretty strategical game. And I think it's it's a very exciting game if, if you catch some of the smaller nuances and the things they, they're up to. So this is the FIDE Grand Swiss tournament um, 2019 in October. And we have a simple e4, e5, knight e6, bishop e4, b, and now c3. My recent game against Kenny, uh, instead of c3 here, um, unlike Eric, I went b4 for um, the, the Evans Gambit. But obviously Eric is, is a bit of a scary pants. He's not as, as solid as I am. So he goes into c3 and goes for this quiet line in the Duke of Pionu. a4. Instead of castling immediately, kind of immediately asks back, what are you doing on that queen side? So we've got the move a6 and castles. Bishop a7, there's a square square for that bishop rook e1. And all of this is kind of theory and slow development from both sides, but steady. We have rook e8 and now the move knight f1. And I was wondering about the move knight f1. It's a very specific move. I think maybe he wanted um, to avoid the B4 trend that had been playing in 2017, with Carlson losing um, both games as black after uh, White had gone B4 against MVL and Koryakin, respectively. So people had obviously been studying up on this line, and now Eric Hansen maybe feels that he doesn't he doesn't want to walk into some prep, and maybe the Knight F1 line is is more obscure. You can still play B4 if you want to. Um, not necessarily always, as long as as long as this bishop's on c1, then the move b4 might be a bit too slow sometimes. So you might even see something like b5. This wasn't played in the game, but there's this cute tactic, and you can keep this in mind if you're playing the Duke of Pionu. And that's that this pawn um, isn't really hanging because of the tactic on uh, f2, this discovery, and the rook is tickets. So the point the point that I'm making is, is that knight f1 doesn't contend for the queen side, and Eric Hansen has got some positional idea in mind, and maybe trying to get out of um, Solomon's prep. But does that happen? We'll see. Bishop e6, smart move, getting rid of this bishop, and you've got rook takes e6. And black doesn't seem to have many weaknesses. Knight e3, and now d5, contending for the center. You need to do that sometime during the day. And now Eric goes for something that's, that's not as mainline, queen c2. Made by queen d7, just getting the queen uh, out of the way of this last rook in the game. Now you can finally bring him in. And the move b4 now, finally. e4, and the move rook a e8. Rook a e8 is a move that um, Anant had played previously against Aronian, but it doesn't feel as principled as rook d8 instead, getting onto this b file. If, let's say, bishop b2, you can always just trade the spawn, and if you really just want to draw a black, you can just go queen d3, try and get the queens off. And if white just wants to keep the queens on, you can make the point that he's given up the um, he's given up the d file. So in the game, rook a8 is a bit more obscure, but okay. It, in 2018, I think it was, Anant had a very decent game against Aronian after rook a8. Now we have the move queen b3, getting behind this b4 pawn, and it's from this move on move 16 that we have a new game. In the Aronian Anant game, Aronian went b5, and this is actually, it, it asks white more questions than the move queen b3, but obviously you don't want to, he probably realized that um, Solomon has got his prep in line, and you don't want to walk into this guy's prep, even though b, b5 seems fine, um, positionally, uh, who knows how deep uh, Kenny had actually studied that move. So you're going queen b3 just to get a new idea into the game. Knight e7, remaneuvering this knight. Rook a2, this is actually very nice. Uh, not disturbing this bishop, just getting the rook active um, through going around and getting more space, just using the second rank. Knight e6 now, and we see these knights are very symmetrical. Knight at 5 c6. And black would have just as well have gone c5, this is more aggressive. Okay, well, but c4 now from white, now only rook d8, so you kind of wonder why why has black played that rook to e8 first, and now rook a e2, and now rook e e8, just playing the other rook back, and it's this very slow computer-like maneuvering in this Duke of Piano, not one side committing to a pawn break, which could maybe upset 
his own structure. So they're both avoiding it. C5 now immediately. But bishop e8, and this bishop isn't too bad. Queen c2, and now if, you, if you're um, black here, you should really be playing very slow. Stuff like bishop c7, and let's say just bishop d2, king h7. Um, a very boring game. You shouldn't be going for anything too majestic and aggressive in the center. So after the move queen c2 from white, Hansen has been very patient. And it's here at this moment that Solomon overextends his arm a bit um, with the move knight f4. And the way the way you're supposed to catch out knight f4 in this situation, we've got these knights beautifully aligned now. We've got all four of them in a row. Um, I don't think we see this very often. Uh, but the point is basically that, that white can upset the structure. He's the first one to capture. And after this capture happens, now the beautiful move, but which wasn't played in the game. In the game, we saw queen b2. But what Eric could have done here is gone e5. And e5 is actually very cool because, okay, you're not dropping this knight because you get to recapture. And now the point is that black needs to trade here in order to alleviate pressure on the e-file. And after white recap black recaptures that pawn, you've got queen e7 and you are dominating on the seventh rank. And this is the compensation you get for pushing this pawn to e5. And which makes knight f4 weak in the first place. In this position though, if black just decides to go knight h7, you can see that this is kind of bad because of knight e6, and suddenly white seems very good. But instead in the game, after um, after capturing the knight, Eric just went queen b2, a very slow way of still playing the position. Um, also probably just not realizing that this was the moment to shine. We have knight h5. And knight h5 is pretty cool because you're not you're not achieving anything through attacking this knight um, on the on the king side. So it, it, it's a, just a, a prophylactic move, and it's also just for defending d7. So instead in the game, after knight h5, we don't have anything special, just simply rook d2. And it's, it's a shifting round of weight in this game. Knight 5, and we've got some more development. The move e5 now, finally. Rook e7. But e5 immediately, earlier on, would have, would have given more advantage to white, definitely. And now queen d2. But... By this time, it already feels like stuff has equalized again. White doesn't have such a big initiative. So now Eric goes e6, trying to force matters. F takes e6. Instead, instead he should have just played it a bit more slowly, gone b5. If a takes b5, just simply queen b4 here, yeah, and he's got this big spatial advantage because of his e5 pawn and this knight on d4. So this would have been another way of playing. But instead, he, he chooses this moment to be a bit more aggressive. e6 right now. And now, okay, f takes e6, and now he's got this, like, outpost for his knight, and then his rook ends up on that square. Knight e7 is a perfectly good move, it just defends this pawn, and it's not really clear how white's attack should go forward. Queen e2, rook f7, and h4, now finally trying to pry open things in the position. Um, instead of h4, knight takes e6 was an option, but then he would have just gone to an endgame, well, the queens could have still also been on the board, and this seems pretty drawish. White has got a bit of a more active rook and maybe better pawn, so this could have been something to hope for. But this game would have probably just ended in a draw. So instead of going for that knight takes uh, the pawn, he goes for h4 now. G takes h4. Trying to mess up the structure on the queen side, but queen d8 is a perfectly fine defense. And now just rook g8, forcing his queen to h3, queen f6, d4. And we see this game is just a very slow maneuvering game. Knight takes h4, f4 finally, rook f7. And white doesn't have a clear way of breaking on the king side. Black's king is perfectly safe. And there's a bit of a repetition. Rook a8 now, going for some more space. Queen g4. And now it was in this position that I thought, okay, this is just going to be a draw after this trade. And rook b1. They, I don't see any sides making progress. And just as I, was, as I was thinking it and I was watching the game, we had king g8, queen g4, king h7, queen h3. And the king goes back to g8 every time because of uh, this fork. Uh, so, and then white's queen goes back to g4 um, just to gnaw at this knight. And potentially there might be some ways of um, putting more pressure on the position. Maybe this means that e6 is potentially weak. Um, 
and so but king h7 then alleviates it again and so after going for the third repetition hansen decides no he wants to go for the win now but it's there's no clear win so for the first thing we just see black taking over some files on the on the um queen side knight h4 and black tries to go for something more and small things that start looking like repetitions and they're just really waiting around for some weaknesses rook c7 um, instead of rook c7, this could have been a, a cool moment just to go knight f5. And if that knight had taken on c6, rook g7 is apparently quite a lot of compensation. Uh, the king needs to get out of the way, and rook g5, and okay, the, the pass pawn on c5 isn't doing too well. But instead in the game, rook c7, knight g4, queen g6, knight e5. And now finally we saw this was Hansen's idea. He uh, threw this rook back so that he finally had a square for this knight on e5. But things aren't terrible yet. Just queen f5 for now, queen f3, and now rook b8. And it's still a bit of waiting. You can see this knight going back to e5 just finally again, and rook c7, just guarding that pawn, queen c3, and knight h5 now. Still very fine. And after knight f3, this is a, the crucial moment of the game. Sorry, this was a lot of boring maneuvering, but not a lot of things really happened unless you're a supercomputer, but even then, I don't even think something super happened. It's in this position after uh, uh, knight f3 that uh, Kenny decides to go for the kill. And this kill, unfortunately, doesn't work. Instead, in the game, if he had gone knight e7, the game would have probably just been a draw. He just defends this e6 pawn, and white doesn't have much to hope for. But I think I think the move going for the win was, was the worst option, rook g7. Because this just gives up the e6 pawn. And here, here is his trick. He goes knight f6. And knight f6 is actually inviting white to go after this pawn on c6. Where after black would just go knight e4. Attacking this queen. And very, very soon queen h3 is going to be on the board. And this is going to be lights out. f6, queen c2, queen h3. Um, I don't know what why I can even try and do. I think you're just losing a piece after knight h4. In any case, um, so instead of instead of going for that pawn, knight h4 in the game went after the queen. And this is Eric's point that his queen can come into the position after this knight has gotten out of the way. And unfortunately, after the queen does come back into the position, the move knight e4 does nothing now. Um, just simply Eric plays knight f3, and this is lights out. This queen is trapped. Uh, instead, yeah, and, and it's here that Kenny resigns, because there's there's no saving this this queen or this h6 pawn. Um, he could have maybe tried f3 in this position, um, but the move queen takes f3 works, because you, you're you not really hanging a piece, and then the checkmate threat isn't there anymore. So if knight e4 now, then just queen f5 check, and this is a winning endgame. So, you know, a really long game, a lot of waiting around, and then finally, um, Kenny just overextending his hand, going for an idea that, that maybe was a bit too cheap. But then again, uh, the patience that you need in these situations, and who knows if there was time, time trouble involved um, at that point, you, you really sometimes need to go for the win, and that does sometimes cost you the game, unfortunately. Okay, I hope you enjoyed Kenny's first game against the Chess Bro. And yeah, um, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. And yeah, I'll see you again in some more videos soon. Thanks.